Also, with uh, Michelle Rapagarna there, just something I will bring up is that um, not just the Liberal Party, but also the Conservative Party, uh, despite what the uh, they might say at the press conferences, have ties to the WF. Uh, they're young global leaders. I'm I'm speaking specifically to Michelle Rempel Garner. Um, I remember during the leadership race, uh, both the provincial one and they actually during the UCP leadership race of 2022, uh, they at the Calgary Stampede every year or the Calgary Stampede that year had the conservative uh, federal conservative leadership barbecue and all the candidates got to come speak and stuff like that. And I remember there's some controversy about uh, Rempel Garner. And uh, she said some very, like, like you said, they kind of waffle sometimes. They, they come conservative and they go liberal uh, based on, I guess, their base, uh, you know, because they just, they just want to show themselves up for votes. And so they're, they're essentially kind of ideologically compromised. Like, I don't even know if they really have an ideology. They, their ideology is the ideology of power. They just want to be in the seat. And so yeah. they'll say what they got to say. They'll dance their little dance to get there. And um, so, yeah, some of them, they have some wins and then they do something silly, <laughs> you know, they do something stupid. And so my, my question, I guess, in terms of the Maverick party is, do you have any ties? Uh, I've heard that. I've heard that the, the origin, the, the person that started it, I can't even remember, Peter something. There's some sort of like yeah. reform party to Maverick kind of genealogy back to the WF. Maybe you can kind of squash that or, or address it, uh, address it here. Well, I don't know Peter Downing uh, at all. He was the Wexit guy and mm. one of the, the kind of the progenitor of of the Maverick party back then. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to speak to any of those guys because I don't have to. I'm the leader. I know exactly what's going on. I have zero use for the WEF. I have zero use for the World Health Organization. I have zero use for any of these United Nation uh, boards, whatever you want to call them, that would come in here and think that they know better than we do on how that we should be governed. They don't know us. You know, they don't, they, I, I reject them wholly and without regard. I just, I don't even, it's, I don't even know what to say. I don't, I have zero use for them. Uh, Klaus Schwab and that whole, frankly, idiotic line of thinking is, uh, I, I don't understand. I know that Justin Trudeau is, is highly influenced uh, by that line of thinking. You can see it. Uh, it's, they don't even try and hide it. Uh, it, it scares me, frankly. Um, I, I'm, I don't know what to do if, if some of their future plans ever came to fruition. I don't know what I would do personally. You know, if they talk about a cashless society, for instance, that's one that is, is personally terrifying to me. If we, have the, if we have no ability to use cash anymore, that is, frankly, the end of freedom. Because we can be controlled. Everything we do can be controlled. Now, some people say, oh, we'll just go to the barter system and everything like that. Eh, it's going to be rough. So we have to put the full brakes on anything like that. And if any, any of your conservative MPs or people that you are looking at to support have even hinted at being involved or, or being in favor of some of the WEF uh, policies, that's, I'm sorry, that's just a bridge too far for me. I think one of the sticking points um, for Western Canadian, um, and maybe what they might be unaware of, is that it's not just the Liberal Party, the Conservative Party as well, uh, is likes the idea of the sustainable development goals, uh, the UN sustainable development goals. And that flies in the face of Western Canada because we're basically Canada's economic engine. We have all the food, agriculture, oil, and that energy resource uh, to not just, not just keep Canada afloat, but other countries as well, our Southern neighbors in the U S I was commenting last week, how um, I went down to Hardesty, Alberta, which is just like a little town in the middle of nowhere. 
you go over this hill as you're driving in, and then all of a sudden it opens up to this massive oil production facility where I don't know how many millions of barrels of oil go through every year to, uh, you know, or liters or whatever of, of oil go through to the States as well, not just Canada and get shipped off to elsewhere. And, uh, you know, any kind of UN agenda, uh, whether it be the Sustainable Development Goals, whether it be UNESCO's Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities, which some municipalities in Alberta have signed on to, um, it's hurtful to Canada and hurtful to Western Canada and hurtful to Alberta. Um, what could, if, 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 there's Ma if there's Maverick MPs that get vo that get elected in this next election here in Alberta or Manitoba or BC or in the territories, uh, you know, what could we do to stop that? Mm. Uh, of course, we're, we're bordering on the whole idea of what is climate change, right? Or, mm. or the climate change agenda, right? Where the, the theory, and really that is indeed what it is. I'm sorry, uh, it's still a theory that human uh, industry is causing the acceleration of, of our climate into a warmer, drier, less hospitable, more, uh, you know, with, with more natural disasters or whatever, right? All, all the apocalyptic thinking. And, and that is still indeed a theory. Um, I'm not going to go into that. Frankly, I don't need to. Uh, because rather than talking about carbon dioxide like it's a pollutant, I would just rather talk about pollution, straight up. How do we get our, our skies cleaner? How do we do that? Uh, you know, and, and I think the one thing, like no Albertan, certainly no Albertan that I know, I don't care what side of the fence you sit on politically, whether you be a liberal NDP or conservative, you know, says, boy, when they wake up in the morning and they go outside and they say, man, I wish we had more smog. You know, I, I wish I wish that we had air like Los Angeles. That would be so nobody says that. That's just stupid. I'm sorry. But so if we're going to acknowledge that and we're going to say that we that the world shares its air, you know, it's not like Canadian air stays in Canada or Chinese air stays in China, you know, uh, What's happening all over the world right now because of the energy crisis that's being caused by war and other things is the world is increasingly burning more coal. Mm. And coal is now there are ways to clean up. And I know some of my supporters will be quick to point out that, you know, that there are ways to clean up coal, too. And we should be exporting that technology for sure. We should be, uh, obviously. But in addition to that, what we should be doing, if, if Western Canada was to do its very most to clean up the environment, to reduce the pollutants in the air, what we should be doing is inviting every drilling rig that we can possibly hire into Western Canada, asking them to drill for natural gas, getting it to a port, converting it into liquefied natural gas or LNG as it's known, getting it onto a ship and sending it to our world economic partners. You know, Europe desperately needs our LNG products and we have a liberal government that keeps telling them, I just don't think that there's an economic, you know, that there's, that there's any kind of a, of a need for that in the world. Like what? They need it desperately. And we could be doing it for them, but we are being politically handcuffed by an ideologically driven Eastern led government. And we are being blocked by a, by a province being Quebec, who is so incredibly hypocritical. They desperately want our money to keep flowing to them, but they make fun of us for how we make it. You know, they say, we need, we need your money, Alberta. We need your money from equalization. But, uh, you know, but we're not going to explore or exploit our own resources because, by the way, Quebec has massive proven reserves of natural gas, which they refuse to, to tap. It, it just, it's annoying. So 
what we should be doing is that if we are actually going to be uh, looking to care for our environment, we should be displacing uh, the dirty the dirty fuels that we have today with clean burning natural gas. As a you know, even I think Germany was the one that coined it as a transitional green energy. You know, uh, I work for an oil field company. I I know exactly how hard these oil companies need to, by legislative force, they have to care for their environment. They have to exploit this resource, not just economically, uh, you know, but also from a, an environmental standpoint. Our, we are number one in the world for, for how we uh, harvest our natural resources. And I, I take no exception to to anybody to say any different like we i can't like we we do a fantastic job of that so um and i see it every day so that is uh what the maverick party's point of view is on climate change <laughs> we should be supplying the world with natural gas and getting mm -hmm. rich while we're doing it by the way <laughs> nothing wrong with that <laughs> right uh, you know I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that poverty is 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 noble somehow noble